Hello, my name is Jonathan, and I'm doing a module on the Viz scripting features for the Viz Artist Advanced Training course. The two plugins we'll be looking at, or the one plugin we'll be looking at, is the plugin under Containers Global Script, which as you see when I drag this onto a container, we have a blank uh, window here to type in your code. We also have the Viz scripting feature, which is scene-based, which if I go to Scene Settings, Script, pop this open, we have the same black window. The main difference here is scene-based scripts can be used for, let's say, example, election type graphics or data-rich data graphics, or more localized to the scene. And the container-based plugins uh, are more like uh, location uh, plugins for the tree or for an object for geometry or whatever you want to use. They could also be, you can also write a script there. They can be talking to each other as well. From these container-based plugins, you can also create what's called a VSL. If I go here to my script plugins here, these are all the different plugins I've created within VizArtist that I've saved off as an actual plugin that is residing locally on the machine. Let's go take a quick look at that. I uh, just pop here, properties, show you the folder where it's stored. So this is the Viz3 folder, and within that we have the plugin folder. You'll see I've got uh, files here which got dot .vip. Now the dot .vip plugins are the plugins that you install when you run the Viz installer. These dot .vsl plugins, these are the plugins that are created when we have a script plugin and we compile it and we drag it into the Viz scene. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. I'll get rid of that for now. Now, the great thing about the Viz script plugins is we have extensive documentation online for you to uh, work with, learn from, uh, figure out how to work backwards and, 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 and take advantage of. So I really recommend exploring these uh, the, the online features. And we're also going to be pulling some program uh, from some examples here and I'm going to show you how we can use these. So get into the scripting of uh, the, the examples we have here on the online documentation. Now it's worthwhile noting, the question is, if you're a Viz artist and you don't write, write script, that's okay. I don't write script personally. The way I do it and the way I work is I have people that I work with that write the scripting for me. I just set the requirements of what I need to happen. I work with the design GUI and the functionality, but I have uh, some very, very strong programmers that I work with in tandem. Now, of course, if you're one of those creative people there that can work with Viz Artists and you also happen to be able to write programming, I'm impressed. Good for you. And if you want to learn, you can also learn uh, at, at your own pace and working backwards as well. So as I said, we have the plugin here and we also have these items up here. And let's talk a little bit about learning. So these are the uh, VSLs I've already made. And if I wanted to actually open up a VSL and see what was inside this script here, maybe learn from it or maybe make some adjustments, all I have to do is drag one of these closed VSLs into the black window here. And this is a MoViz controller, which means it's an interactive plugin used to control the MoViz uh, clip plugin. Okay, this is what I asked and this is what I got. I drag it here and I add at the end. And as you see now, we've actually opened up that code. So if you wanted to take the effort to learn how to do this, or if you actually have a friend as a programmer and you want, they want to learn from as well, they can learn from this and, and they can do this. There's a reason why we have scripts like this. If I compile and run this, you'll see that it creates a GUI, which is part of this within the script here as well. And now I've also got this script went from blue to black. And you'll see here that these are actually the .vsls in the folder. These are not. This is very important. These .vsls here are now existing as files in your folder, in the plugins folder of Viz3, as I just showed you. What that means is that you have now have to make the effort to transfer and distribute your new .vsl plugins to all of your engines within your environment. Okay? So the plus feature of being able to use .vsls is you can create your own personalized library of functional plugins that pertain to 
what you need to happen in your workflow. If you were to keep your scenes like this, where we can't just keep it black, you don't need to distribute any plugins. This plugin here, which is compiled, is now database based, which means that you could open up the same scene on a different engine and the code and the plugin comes with it like this. Okay? So let's go look at some samples while we're here. I've got some example scenes here and I have examples of scene scripts. And I think you can download these for your uh, needs. So I'm just going to pop them with the first one here. Okay, so this is the first uh, example. And this is an interactive example. Most of the scene scripts are interactive, but they don't have to be. They can be for, I think data is another good example that they can be used for. But if you want to interact with a scene in Viz, you have to activate your little E down here. Okay, see how now I've got the E act activated? So if I hit click, I'm doing a left button down. When I hit click, we change this text to down and we change the translucency on the alpha. Right now it's a 50. If I click it, it'll go to 100 and become the word down. What's actually happening here? I'm going to edit this, pop it open, and we're going to take a look at the script real quickly here. So on left button down here, we're having the text geometry, which is this element, you know, text is a geometry, switch to the values of down and the alpha value will become 100. On left button up, if you're using a mouse to play with this, you will have the words go to up and the, and the alpha go back to 50. Very, very simple example right there, okay? So let's go back here to my script plugins folder. If I drag this compiled black script into this folder here, I'm going to give this an, a new name, call this up, down, alpha. That's the name of the plugin right there. So when I go and add this here, and uh, it's going to be somewhere in there, if I now then go back to my C folder, the plugin folder, and I'll refresh this as well. I'm just going to look for up. There it is. So this is the plugin we just made, this new .vsl. You see it's got a .vsl. As soon as I drag that in there, it creates it and puts it in the plugin folder of the Viz3. So all you have to do is drag this like that into your folder here, and it will create uh, the plugin automatically in your folder as well. I'm going to get rid of that because I really don't want it there as well. Let's look at another example. So what this is doing here is I am now, let's see, this has got, uh, there is a target text. And the target text is, if you see, wherever I click in the scene, I'm now able to grab the coordinates and place them up here. I'm not sure what this thing does. And I think the actual script for that is in here. And uh, we have the words target right there. Geometry, text, X, Y, Z. Anyways, blah, blah, blah. Those of you who write a script can read this. And we're now able to sort of grab the coordinates. Let me show you what happens if I, if I make a quick little typo here. See, I've just had an NS there. When I compile and run this, it's going to give me an error. This is like a this is like a little uh, test bed right there. So it's not going to let me compile and run this script if you have a typo in or a problem with your code. Okay. So that's another example of a of a, of a container based script. I'm not sure what this one does. I think it's very similar. Similar to the previous one. And let's take a look at a scene script. Okay. So the scene script, as I mentioned before, is there's no container script here. But if I go to my scene settings and I edit and, and do this, you'll see that we have uh, a very simple command here, this right here. So I'm going to say this is my 
module. And I compile and run that, and we make that change. Very similar to the container plugin, we're just talking to the scene base, we're finding the actual name of the container, find container, name of the container, the geometry text is going to be equal to, in quotes, whatever you're going to make the change to. We can have a commented out uh, message here as well. Let's go back to one of the simple scripts one here. This is one here I wanted to show you. Okay, here it is. So as you see here, we have a geometry moving from left to right. And I've got a little bit of GUI here, which is affecting its speed. So I'm going to make it a little bit slower. But if we were to look at the, at the code, and this is an example where you can learn, we're seeing we're moving in the position here from 40 to negative 400. We're setting the speed value here. And uh, there's some other parts here which are setting the, the GUI as well. So that's an example where you actually don't need to be writing animations. You can be using a script to create an animation for yourself as well. So let's go ahead and make our own little script, which we pulled from the documentation. I'm going to bring down a cube. I'm going to make this red out of material, give this nice red. And it needs to have an alpha. I'll tell you why in a sec. And then I need my script. script. So I'm going to go find a sample script that I liked. And this is the one I was doing here. So what we're going to do is say on enter, which is when the, the mouse goes over, the, value, the alpha value is 100. On leave, the alpha value is 50. And we can also affect the material, uh, material, which is a color, and see how we're actually talking to the cube, which is the name of the geometry. So copy. And there we go. So as I said before, I'm personally not one for writing scripts, but I recognize that the power of this plugin, and it's probably one of the most advanced, useful, functional plugins you will ever have, is great for being able to, to design and have extremely intelligent and highly functional viz artist scenes. And, and, and really, the sky is going to be your imagination. If you're a creative person, design person out there, it's going to be up to you to write the requirements that you need to get uh, your partner, code, writer, technology person to help you uh, realize your vision with this. Or if you want, you can try it yourself and, and, and give it a go. So as I said, this was an introduction to the Viz scripting. If you want to get deep into the Viz scripting, Viz Artist does, Viz, uh, does offer a full training course on the programming of writing uh, these sort of scripts as well. Um, take care. This was the Viz module for Viz, Art, Viz scripting for Viz advanced training. And my name is Jonathan.